So we had to plan for all that displacement of the rafter tail. Hey, funny meeting you all here. Well, welcome to the window. We're outside and you can see here, here's each of those rafter tails coming down. Notice the extension of that seat cut, how it comes out. Well, that's because we have rigid insulation and a drainage plane and, and rain screen and a bunch of things happening out here that are actually gonna build out the wall. So the rafter tail is then sized so that the fascia here is the designated or the intentional size as an architect that I look for aesthetically. At the end of the rafter tail, you have two options. You have basically what I call the square cut, which is what we have here. The other cut is what's called a plum cut. A plum cut is if I attach a string there and it dropped down, it would be a vertical cut on that rafter tail. And this piece would extend down. The most common reason for using the plum cut is if I wanted to put gutters out here. Because if I put gutters out there, then I have this vertical face that I can then attach that gutter to. If I have a slope face, it makes it a little awkward to make that gutter connection. So you really have to understand in the design phase of what is the look we're going for. Are we looking to put gutters on this house? It's always a big question to ask up front because if we just went and designed this and said, hey, we're gonna have this really cool square cut fascia out here with some really nice stuff underneath happening in the soffit. And then the homeowner says, okay, well, can we put gutters on the house? Well, we're at a little bit of a loss. I'm gonna jump in that window over there because we have a soffit right behind the camera that's under construction and you'll be able to see how that goes together. Hey, welcome back. You can see here, here we have the fascia getting started to get finished. So you'll see here we have the rake board running down. So the part of the roof that runs parallel to the high wall or the gable end wall is typically called the rake. The fascia down here and this section of roof is called the eave. The finished pieces that we put under here and this extension of the roof is called the soffit. So in this case here, we use the boral channel siding and we're using it as our soffit material. You can see a nice finished shot of what I'm calling that square cut. Join me, we're gonna jump over. We're gonna take a look at this on the drafting table. Welcome back to the office. We have a roof framing drawing here. We talked a little bit about it out at the job site. Let's uh, grab our trusty friend, Big Red here. We have our triple glazed window here. We have our header here. We have our header pocket here that will get insulated later. Our double top plate here and then our roof rafter here and you notice that the roof rafter has a nice little cut in it here and it gets completed by going down here so that's basically the outline of the roof rafter now keep in mind at one point in time it's probably something like that and we just took this section and cut it out so we have that wall and then the rafter seats nice and neatly on top of this double top plate here. This is typically called the bird's mouth or seat cut. I've heard it called that too. But basically it's where the rafter sits down on top of the double top plate. And then you have the extension here of the roof eave. Right? In this case here, the roof eave projects. It's probably on the order of about 20 inches. I like that my houses have some really good overhangs on there. This is that two by 12. These are 16 inches on center. So it's a little beefy, but remember this house here is on the coastal region. So it's in this 120 mile an hour wind zone. Things are a little bit ratcheted up from the norm there. We can see the ceiling joist here. It comes into that rafter and it ties our system together. So, you know, rafters typically 